Welcome to another screencast. This is in your Measuring Earth packet. We're going to show you how to draw a contour profile. If you turn to page 16, you see a map. All around you have the ocean. Right over here we have zero, sea level. 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, 300, and the peak is at 325. That's the benchmark. So this is asking you to draw the contour profile from A to B. So currently you're looking at the overhead view of this island, and they're asking you to draw the contour profile as it would look from the side. So if you take a piece of paper, a piece of scrap paper, and what you can do is you can line it up, and you're going to make your mark at A and B first. And label it as such just in case it comes off. So here we could see that A is at zero and B is at zero. So I'm going to make the same marks zero and zero. Now anytime there's a contour line that crosses this line between A and B, I just make a mark and then I label its elevation. In this case, this is 50. In this case, it's nice and easy on this one. I can look right up over here and see that it's 100. And notice how I'm writing the numbers in that particular orientation. You'll see why in a minute. 150, so that I could still have enough room to write everything. 200. And here, I can see this one, but I can't really see the value. So I have to look. See, I kind of lift up the piece of paper, and I can see that that's also, what, 200. Kind of weird. Right? Unusual. This line right over here. If I take a look and trace it back, it's actually the 150 line. Kind of weird. Right? So over here, I also have, just to double check it, kind of come around and see that it's also 150. Certainly going to make for an interesting profile. And over here, you see this line? trace that back and I could see that's also 200 200 and now I see this is 250 this is 300 this is 300 this again I could look and see that it's 250 this if I trace, see, look, I see over here. Okay, that's 200. And then over here, I can look and see if that's 150. And then I che check over here and trace and see that that is 100. And then finally, my last one is 50. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take this sheet and I'm going to transfer it to the little scale below. And you could see they were nice enough to do A and B for you already. They're both at zero. And now watch what I do. I keep this justified on the left. Can you see over here? I'm going to keep this. If it moves over, I'll just reset it and put it back on the A line. And now watch what I do. I give it slightly less than, and I make a little dot at my 50. And now I move this up. And I know that that number is 100. So the spacing will be right. I'm going to move this up. Till I get 150. And move this up till I get what? 200. This one is 250. And I move it up. And it's important to do that. That way, so you get the spacing correct. So you could accurately represent the profile. This is 300. And look, oh, I get to leave it there. A little vacation there. Got to leave it in the same spot. And now this. I go to 250, bring this down until I'm at what? 200. And again, if I make a mistake, oh, I just all I have to do is push this back over and bring this down. See, it lines up again with the A. Okay, and I'll make my mark at 200. I'll make my mark at 150. And now look, another 150. Now I go back up to 200. 
and then what? Oh, 200 again, and then 150. So I move this down. Again, just trying to get the spacing correct, which is why I'm moving the paper up and down. And anytime I make a mistake, I just kind of, or get off the paper, I just realign it with that A. And now I bring this down to 50. And just to double check, my B is at zero. Everything is good with the world. Now comes the fun part, connect the dots. This is where it gets a little bit weird. Um, if you think about the earth and nature, never really do you have flat, straight lines. So whenever you get to the mountain peak and you could look, if you were traveling this, you know you're going to hit 300. And then the highest elevation you could possibly hit is 325. But since the line doesn't go through 325, you know you're going to be greater than 300, but you have to be less than 350. So when we draw our connect our little dots over here, it's a free flowing line, not like straight line segments. And now what happens, I have to go above the 300, but I have to be below the 350. All right, so you could have gone all the way up and almost touched the line. You could have gone up just slightly, just as long as you're over the 300, but below 350, everything is cool in a gang. And now I come back down. And the same holds true for lower elevations. When I go down, I know here that I'm going to go below 150, but I'm not going to hit 100. And in nature, we don't have straight flat lines, so I get a little curve there. And what's going to happen here at this peak? I have to go above 200, but I can't hit the 250 line. So I'm going to come up a little bit and come back down, and then I finish and I connect the dots. And everything is good with the world, and I have created what is called a contour profile. So this is what it would look like on a topographical map. That's what it looks like from overhead, bird's eye view, whatever you want to call it. And again, just to reemphasize the fact, ocean, sea level, zero. That comes up a lot. Um, and then this is what it would look like from the side. The important things are going above the 300, but not hitting 350, going below the 150, but not hitting 100, and then going above the 200, but not hitting the 250. Those are the critical elements when doing a contour profile. So this was page 16. You can try the other pages in your packet for fun, or the next time you go to a contour profile party, which is probably this weekend for you. I hope you enjoyed the screencast, and I will talk to you later.